Welcome back folks to another video in the series on dis disaster preparedness. In this video I thought we'd talk about what everybody likes to talk about. The bug out bag or 72 hour kit or get out of dodge bag or e-pack or whatever you want to call it. We're going to talk about the kit today. The bug out bag mainly. Uh, there's most people get the bug out bag and the inch bag, which is what stands for I'm never coming home, or the get home bag. A lot of people inter interchange those words and think they're the same thing where they're not. A bug out bag is just that. You got everything in there that you need for a minimum of 72 hours to bug out of your location and go somewhere safer. And this, and that could be either just for a, a small disaster. Uh, local disaster all the way up to uh, you know true crap hit the fan disaster you know real bad I'm bugging out now over several years I've watched several I don't know hundreds of YouTube videos on everybody's bug out bags bug out kits I've seen some good ones I've seen some really good ones I've seen some bad ones I've seen some really bad ones um, and everything in between so I, I thought I'd do a you know, in conjunction with this series, I thought I'd do a series or a video on the on the bag itself. And then there again, there's a lot of tactical stuff out there. Everybody thinks, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that have the mentality of, you know, I'm going to just grab my stuff and I'm heading for the hills. You know, I'm getting my AR and I'm I'm gone. Well, in a true, you know, crap hit the fan situation, I, th that's not going to be the case. I don't think uh, everybody and their brother has that same mindset. So. You need to think of another way. And that's why you need to have everything planned out. That's why I'm trying to do this series to kind of help you along, um, help you think, get you, get you thinking. So let's talk about the bug out bag. Now, you know, what you need to figure out for yourself, the first question you need to ask is, where am I going? What is my bag going to be used for? And that should be in your disaster plan. And once you figure out what type of bag, what your bag going to be used for, then you can go from there. Set out here in front of you are some examples of different types of bags that I have and some that I'm working on and whatnot. The Alice pack over here, you know, to the, over here, you know, you guys have seen that in another video. It's, it's constantly evolving. As with my other equipment and gear, as I've talked about in other videos, my gear is always evolving as my knowledge grows as my skills grow as new stuff come out I'm always changing and updating my gear you can again you need to decide on if you want to go military style or if you want to do something you know more along the lines of the commercial style bags you know all the way up to you know suitcases like we have over here this is just a rolling suitcase I've seen bags in that a good idea big um, Containers on the bottom like small truck boxes that you put in the back of a truck. That's another idea that I'm working on I'm working on that now for um, Just something I'm messing around with to duffel bags to just any other type backpacks You need to figure out what your container is going to be just like we talked about in the first aid kit videos What's your container going to be? What are you going to put your bag or what you going to put your kit in? So once you figure out the first question is what is my bag going to be used for am I going ahead for the hills or is it just going to be am i just planning on hey if there's a local disaster i'm just i need to get some you know some stuff some change of clothes or whatever and go to the hotel down the street it just depends you have to decide that on your own i'm not here to tell you that you have to do this this way i'm just trying to help you along so what we're going to do now is i'm going to break down the contents of these bags and we're going to kind of go over some things that i think you should have in your in your bags so stay with me, I'll be right back. All right, after you decided on a container, next thing you should think about is shelter. Now again, this, fall, this is all gonna fall back to your primary question. What is your bag gonna be used for? You're probably not gonna need a tent or anything if you're just gonna go, planning, if you're planning on a local disaster and you're going to the hotel down the street or to a friend's house. However, there may be times to where Say your house catches on fire or floods or whatnot, the flood waters have receded and you want to stay at your residence to make sure it's not uh, getting looted or whatever, damaged anymore or whatever the case may be, but you can't reside in your residence for whatever reason. 
So then you need to think of some type of shelter. Well, shelter options can vary. If you're going to do a backpack style and you're limited on what you can carry, then you might want to go with something like a, a tent. Or, this is a tent back here. This is another tent. This camouflage one. There's a blue one. If you want to go lighter weight, you might want to do something like a tarp or even a drop cloth. Or if you're just a single person and you just have a bag for yourself, you know, a poncho or something like that will give you some type of shelter. However, if you have a family and you're planning for a family, each member of your family should have their own type of bag. However, on the flip side of that, also if you have a family, you need to think about that shelter again. I used to have a camper, an RV, or well, as a pop-up camper. I recently moved, so I had to sell that. So that, that was one of my shelter options if something happened at the house. So now I had to think of other options. Well, for my backpack, I have a bug out, uh, or my bug out bag is my backpack. Well, in my backpack, I have, you know, shelter options. These are, this is not what's in my backpack. These are just options uh, for you. But, so, you need to think about that sort of thing. Any of these things will work. So, you got shelter down. Let's talk about something else. Once you've got shelter covered, you need to think about water. If you remember the rule of threes, you can only have three days without water, generally. That's a general rule, depending on your environment. So you need to think about water. Again, if you're going with a backpack style bag, you might want to go with some military type canteens or some Nalgene bottles or regular bottled water. I carry, usually in my backpack, I have two military canteens, maybe a Nalgene container, and a couple of bottles of water already made. Because in my bug out bag, I know some people are gonna, you know, this is a, a, a bad thing, but I usually don't leave my canteens and my Nalgene containers full. Now, I know in a bug out situation, I'm gonna need those full of water, but I generally don't keep them full. So I'll put bottled water in there most of the time and just leave the bottled water in my pack and um, rotate it out that way. But I do use, I'm unlike most people, I do use my bug out bag for other things, so I'm constantly using it, so I probably could leave it full of water if I wanted to. Another example back here, you know, I know this is bigger, but these are gallon, this is a gallon of water. This is an, uh, a juice container that's been cleaned out and sanitized with a little bit of bleach and just filled back up with water. Also along the lines of water, you need to think of how you're going to purify that water. You may need to get a good filter. Um, this is just a, an old sweet water style. Sweet water is not even in business anymore. But a, a, a water filter or some water purification tablets, some bleach, iodine, some way to purify your water. A Berkey water filter or, or is excellent. Some way to purify your water. Especially if you're on the move, you're going to need to drink. That's water covered. Let's talk about food next. All right, let's talk a little bit about food. You gotta eat, right? So you're gonna need some type of food in your bags or your kits. Again, type of food is up to you. If you want to go something real lightweight, then a lot of people go with like something like Mountain House or Backpackers Pantry stuff like that. Freeze dried food, very lightweight, but requires water to heat or water to rehydrate so you can eat it. Another fallback is the great old MRE. They're heavier, but they are truly a meal ready to eat. If you want want to take the weight, then use it. Another type of freeze-dried meal are these wise type foods. They're similar to the mountain house stuff. What I keep in my uh, my get home bag and my vehicle kit are just some of these mainstay bars. I just keep a few of those in my get home bag because that serves a different purpose. Again, or some people choose to go with regular household foods, which there's nothing wrong with that. But again, what you have to understand is this stuff, especially your canned foods, is very heavy. So is this this type of bag something you're going to be carrying on your back? You may want to consider something else other than that. Peanut butter, ramen noodles, oatmeal. Uh, don't forget your drink mixes and stuff like that because drinking water all day, every day, gets awful crappy. Uh, I always have something. If you're a coffee drinker, make sure you have coffee packets in your kits. If you're a hot chocolate drinker, have hot chocolate. Here's some apple cider packets in here, some tang, some little Gatorade packets, some little tea packets, some little coffees. I have all that stuff in my kits. Also, you want to put some quick pick-me-ups, stuff like granola bars, peanuts, trail mixes, stuff like that. 
again, a lot of this stuff you have to rotate out. So you you constantly need to check your bags and go through your gear. If you go with something that you're going to need to heat up, you need to think about you're going to need a stove of some type. And here's just a couple of different types of stoves. This is a gas type stove, a white gas type Coleman stove. You're going to need to carry fuel for that. Again, another type of uh, propane mixture type stove from Coleman. You're going to need to carry fuel for that. That takes weight. That takes fuel. So you got to think about that too if you need to heat stuff up and cook stuff if you can't use a fire for anything or something like this hobo type stove. So you need to think about the stoves too if you're going to have to cook food. So keep that in mind. Let's move right along to a couple other things. Let's talk about a few more things. Clothing. I kind of tend to put clothing along the lines of shelter because depending on where you live, the time of year, and everything, your clothing is shelter. It shelters your body. It shelters your skin. So I tend to add clothing sometimes in with shelter, but I forgot to talk about it. So let's talk about clothing. In your kits, you need to have at least a minimum of one change of clothing. Now, there again, depending on you know what you're planning for and what type of kit you you are you're creating and the time of year depends on the type of clothes you're going to put in that kit you know here i just have some pair of bdu pants uh I, it's getting summertime so i'll probably you know keep those in there here's some thermal uh, long johns shirt and pants some underwear t-shirts socks some uh in the back back there we forgot to talk about before is um along the lines of shelter too you got to think of a sleeping bag or, or a wool blanket or something to cover up with to keep warm you know even if it's summertime a lot of times you're still going to want something to get inside especially kids they're not going to want to just sleep out under the stars so get a sleeping bag or something for them so just an example here just just a wool blanket set up i have and stuff like that also some things to think about to keeping your kits toilet paper as i've mentioned in previous videos before I never leave home without toilet paper. I have toilet paper in all my kits, all the way down to the smallest of kits. Don't go home. I don't leave home without toilet paper. Some other things. Sanitation is extremely important, especially after a disaster. So you need to have some type of sanitation stuff in your kits. It doesn't take up much space nor weight to put a small bar of soap, like the little travel bar of soap, some shampoo in there. There's some more wipes, toothbrush, toothpaste, stuff like that. I'm telling you. It goes a long way. Anybody that's ever been to a third world country or after a disaster has happened, sanitation is a very, very big issue. And we're going to talk about sanitation in another video too, but have that stuff in your kits. Also, moving along to first aid. You should always have a first aid kit in your, in your bug out bag as well. It can be, you know, small, large, whatever you want to do, it's up to you again. I have videos posted already on first aid kits, so I'm not going to go over the kits themselves. But depending on your type of kit, put a first aid kit in there. Also, don't forget prescription medications. A lot of people are on medications nowadays. I have high blood pressure, so I need to think about my prescription medications to keep in my kit. Eyeglasses. If you wear eyeglasses or contact lenses, have a spare pair in your kit. Always keep that stuff handy because you never know. Again, your bug out bag is for... Hey, something's happened. I got to grab and go. So you want everything in there that you're going to need. All right, I think I beat that dead horse down. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about a few more things and then we'll wrap it up. <clears throat> you're also going to need, after a disaster, say it's a power outage or something, you're going to need some type of lighting. So think about lighting you can put in your kits. Anything from flashlights to candles, stuff like these little light sticks. These little life gear lights are really cool. You know, you've seen these in another video of mine. These things are great. Also have spare batteries for your stuff. Have, you know, some way to light things. Let's move on to some other stuff that people really like to see and really like to talk about. It's firearms. If you're going to put firearms in your kit, again, that's up to you. Um... We're going to talk about firearms in another video as well. This is just kind of touching on. You're going to put firearms, you might want to, you need to think about having a cleaning kit for your firearms. Maybe some spare parts in your cleaning kit. Uh, definitely spare ammo, a holster of some sort, how you're going to carry it when you take it out of your bag. So think about that. I'm not going to talk about a whole lot about firearms right now. That's your decision. Again, we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about some more special items you should probably have in your kits. 
basic tools a knife a axe or a hatchet or pocket knife multi-tool basic survival gear stuff like in this little bag back here it's called my organizer bag survival kit and i have another video on that basic survival skills in case you are out in the woods and you need basic survival wilderness survival stuff have that stuff matches stuff like that also think about some gloves if you're in an urban or a woodland environment also always have gloves handy other things to think about is some notepads or paper have your this is a cool right in the rain notepad have some pad and paper you might want to think about putting some games or something in your kit especially if you have kids deck of cards something like that goes good in your kits your documentation package or your emergency binder we've talked about that in a previous video have that have one of those or a copy of that in your kit as well maps of where you're going in your area have that in your kit as well money my uh, my quarters here is kinda representing silver you know cash in a disaster situation I've been deployed to disaster areas after a disaster ATM machines don't work if the bank is destroyed the bank folks ain't coming back to the bank for a little while so you may have to go to another town over to get money or another county or even another state so always have cash on hand put some cash in your kits how much cash or how much gold and silver that stuff, sort of stuff is up to you but have that sort of thing in your kits as well so I know this video has been long guys and I'm sorry I'm, it's not my intention to make a movie out of this but I just want to give you some ideas to think about, stuff to put in your kits. I know everybody goes through all their stuff and you know buys a bunch of equipment, but you need to get out and use your equipment. As you see, 99% of this equipment, you can tell it's been used. I use my equipment. I get out and I use it. So I know what works and I know what doesn't work. This works for me. It may not work for you, vice versa. So again, get out, use your kits, buy the equipment. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And I'll answer them again to the best of my abilities. And I appreciate all your views and comments and support and watching these videos. And if there's any other videos you'd like to see, let me know. I've got more coming in this series, so just bear with me. I thank you again.